successful. Those who did not know themselves, they were unsuccessful. And so Allah Almighty always uh, makes a difference between uh, those who are successful and those who are not successful. Allah Almighty says, obey Allah. Allah says, obey the Prophet. And He says, obey those whom I have put given an authority over us. That is, obey, to obey, obey Allah Almighty, that is a, an order. Who is better to order and have the authority to say, obey me, more so than the Creator? How can they be 71 different sects of Jews, 72 different sects of Christians, and 73 different sects of, of Muslims, and everybody claiming that they believe in God Almighty? There's something wrong here. Because when Allah Almighty sent 124,000 prophets, None of the prophets contradicted any of the prophets. The message in the Torah, the message in the Injil, the purified pages, the Psalms of David, the Quran of Muhammad, it is, there is no distinction in terms of what the message is. The message is believe in Allah Almighty. Obey Allah Almighty, worship Allah Almighty, and follow those whom Allah Almighty is sending to guide us. If you follow them, you're following me. If you love them, you're loving me. If you disobey them, you're disobeying me. Why is Allah saying that? This is what we don't understand. And so humanity... Even though Allah Almighty says, I have created you in different tribes, races, and nations that you may know each other. How can we know each other if we don't know ourselves? And what is it that Allah wants us to know? Allah wants us to know that our, our origin is not a physical origin. Because of our physical, if our origin was a physical origin, we are all not from the same physical origin. So therefore, we can never have the same frame of reference. We can never be on one accord. We can never follow and obey guidance. It gives us an excuse. Well, I didn't understand. I'm from this nation. I'm from that nation. I'm from this race. I'm from that race. I'm from that geographical uh, 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 background. I'm from that one. I'm from this one. We've lost our mind. That's why there's no unity in any community. From east to west, north to south, because the people do not have a clue who they are. A lot talks about the day of promises. And if we start to use our minds, we start to think that, yeah, everybody is born, but everybody dies too. Where was that body before it came here? And where is that body going when it leaves out of here? We gave the, that body the power to be able to move around and to think and to be able to be in the reflection and the image of a creator that think and can change his mind and that was able to bring about changes. No other animals are able to do that. See how progressive your friendliest lion or your friendliest snake or giraffe or dog or cat. Let them build something. Let them establish some, uh, a, a way of life that's going to benefit people. Let them bring people back to the creator. Knowing where they're coming 
from and be able to direct people back to their creator. It ain't happening. And we ain't thinking. No mind. One of the most beautiful, gracious, brilliant things that Allah Almighty has given us, a mind. It is a terrible thing to waste. And we're thinking ourselves that I'm this way because I'm from that place. No, we are spiritual beings. Every human being is a spiritual being. That spiritual being is much far greater than any physical anything. It transcends time and space in cause and effect. It has no expiration date because it always existed and it always will exist because it all originates from one's creator that has no mother and father, that gives, doesn't give birth to children, that's unique, and no one can comprehend that being through a physical means. Through a mind. One's being have to be connected to that being to, all, to know and to feel and to know that being. Like two human beings coming together and say, oh, you're a human being like me. You're not a snake or a dog or a cat or a rat. I can see that you are a human being like me. Yes, you have five fingers like I do. You, you, you have legs. You, you, we're from the same human race. Well, the soul also recognizes where it's from when it comes in contact with those souls that understand their origin. They know their family. There is no, there is no, there is, there are no veils to that. Time and space is no barrier to that. Why would Allah Almighty send 124,000 prophets to humanity and then seal, and then seal, seal the prophets and give us some laws and regulations to train us and discipline us and say, as you practice this, with cleanliness, you will be returned while you're here, connected to your origin, while you're in the present. We don't think. We don't have a doggone clue. That's why we have no power. Walking around here with our necks up, pride like we know something. We don't know anything. You read books, and, and what do you know when you read books? If you don't know your origin, Allah Almighty created us. Allah says, I taught you about you, about me. Who you are and who you are before you were created. Before you were given intelligence. You come here knowing why do you live here not knowing? Why do you leave here ignorant? Who's teaching you that you are physical? You are from a world. You are from the low life. And everybody's thinking that their low life is superior to everybody else's low life. They're all of them are low. It's a stupid. We don't have no understanding. And our leadership is crazy because one of the worst characteristics of the ego is that everyone about it want to be our leader. But the leaders don't understand who they are. You should want to follow so you may know about yourself. No one's following. When the law almighty sent the prophets among humanity, all those prophets, they were also came to a woman. When Moses went to Pharaoh, now he was coming to Pharaoh and say, look, you out of order, man. You claiming as a creation 
something as if something created to be the creator? He said, man, you done lost your mind. Pharaoh said, no, I'm God on earth. He said, you are. He said, do you control life and death? He said, what? Yes, I do. Hey, you, jump off the cliff. Hey, you, don't jump off the cliff. I control life and death. So Moses looked at him and said, can you make the sun rise in a place that is sitting, God? Now, his mind didn't even have a frame of reference for that question. So you can imagine how stupid he looked and how ignorant he felt, how small he felt. At that time, he probably could have hula hoop with a cheerio. He felt so small. Where is this thought process coming from? It was boggled. But there were believers in, even among his camp, there were believers. I see it was a believer. His wife was a believer. She was saying, listen. Some of his wise men were saying, listen. See, the most powerful aspect of a human being is not the one who is speaking. It's the listeners. It's the listeners. Because through listening, you begin to know who you are. You're listening with your mind. You listen with your heart and your soul. And you take it in what you're hearing. And it was something you can relate to that, wow, I never really considered that. Wow, that is really amazing. That's because what comes from the heart goes to the heart. The reason the law almighty tells us to clean ourselves, that purification is half of the faith. Because the Prophet Muhammad Islam, was created. His physical body was created. But what was his power? The words of Allah Almighty in his heart. Did his heart need to be clean? Yes, it did. From the time he was a child, Allah Almighty was sending angels that were cleaning his heart. They used to tear his heart open and wash his heart. Can you imagine what he probably was going through if he was conscious of that? What in the world is going on? And it was 40 years old when he received the revelation. Allah Almighty was preparing his heart for his word and putting it in a place that could be understood in the soul, in the heart of the human being. Calvin Mukman Beit Allah, the heart of the believer is the house of Allah Almighty. So this is why in the worshiping and in practicing Islam, we make our wudu and then we, 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 we make rakats and we pray and we, we fast and we go to hajj and we give charity. It is to begin to clean the body, preparing the body for the words of Allah Almighty. Takbir! Allah Akbar! Takbir! Allah Akbar! Takbir! Allah Akbar! Because the soul already know. So when Allah, Allah Almighty starts to unveil you to you, our hearts are able to open up and receive the words of Allah Almighty, which is the highest level of intellect, of feeling, of knowing, of being, of wisdom. We don't need no books. The books do not have the information we need. If books, once the information comes and written, it no longer has the same power. It's just a recorded information that happened. It is a recorded history. But who's reading it? And then Shaitan, why would Shaitan attack the, 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 the Torah and the Injil, changing the words? So human beings, when they read it, they wouldn't understand it. They would be confused. Because he didn't want them to know that it was one message to humanity. It united human beings. 
that was from different nations, different tribes, and different races. But never mind, that part of them that's from Allah Almighty is the oneness. Everyone comes from Allah. Everyone returns to Allah. Shaitan has blocked that knowledge. So we don't understand that we are a continuum of our existence. And Allah sent, brought up, put us in a physical, took our soul and put it in a physical body so that we may know the power of Allah Almighty in everything. That's only a drop. Your whole being couldn't even, our bodies couldn't take your real being. And our being, our physical being, it's just a drop. It's just a drop. Without that drop in us, we will be no better than some snake or a rat or a cat or dog. Allah sent 124,000 prophets to protect that drop. Little dad will do you. Protect it. Guard it. Keep your mind clean. Keep your body clean. Keep your actions clean. So you begin to unfold to you. People don't even sit with themselves no more. Don't you know people don't even like themselves enough to spend time with themselves? They always preoccupied with something outside of themselves because they don't want to deal with, with their decadence and their, and their ignorance and, 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 and their, uh, defor their, their spiritual deformities because shaitan has taught us you ain't nothing. Don't get by yourself and start thinking about it because you know you're going to start getting, start getting stressed out about what you did. You know what you did last summer. We know what you did last summer. So you don't even want to think about that. You don't want to think about anything that you did. You don't want to get caught about because you figure like, okay, I'll block it out. It's gone. No, it's not. He don't want you to deal with it and repent and get it together and clean it up so Allah Almighty may open you up and send more of you to you. More of that light to your heart. We're like that. We've lost our hope. That is the worst sin to lose your hope. Face it. Oh yeah, I was horrible. I did these things. Oh Allah, please forgive me. And the thing is, is this. Allah says, I listen to every suppliant. I mean, because he listens to it, don't mean he's going to answer, right? But he listens, he hears. What is he listening for? Sincerity, eclats, understanding of self. That's why a lot of people, they pray for things. Oh, Lord, give me this, raise me up. Oh, Lord, make me king, make me queen. Oh, Lord, make me this. Lord says, if I give you that without you understanding who you are and who you are, you'll be no less than another pharaoh. So you have to understand the wisdom of Allah Almighty allowing his words to be recorded in books. These are not tales of the ancient. These are lessons. Don't be like that one. Look what happened. Alexander the Great, and I'll be pleased with him. He was a king, very few are like him. Very few come to this world that are like him, that have that kind of power, that kind of physical power, that kind of authority over people, that kind of gangster that you can go in any place and convert any place and control any place, but yet you look into your Lord. With humility, anyone that humbles himself, Allah Almighty raises him. Anyone that exalts himself, Allah humbles them. He knew that. And he said, well, I'm going to write a will. And I want everybody to know, from east to west, north to south. See, kings were buried differently. They'd be in this something marble, and, and they'd be so eloquent, and, and the gold and marble, and, and these caskets, and they were so heavy, and they were, had these big, strong people carrying them. He put me in a box. He says, look, I want you to do this. 
He said, I want you to take the great hands of the great Alexander the Great. And I want you to hold them outside of the casket and let everybody know that if anything could have been taken out of this life, the great Alexander the Great would have had something in his hands. He said, don't be cheated by this world. It's elusive. It says, take me. I'm yours. Everybody think this world is mine. Our brothers and sisters dying every day. This is my turf. How long they say that before? They don't even, they're not even around no more. The turf is still there. We weren't here 100 years ago, but there was somebody 100 years ago. Weren't they saying the same thing? That turf is still here. 100 years from now, we're not going to be, any, be here. We claim something now. The turf is still going to be here. He said, don't waste your time being tricked by this world. Listen to Shaitan. He said, the only thing you can take with you are the good deeds that you did in this life. Even though he conquered the world, east to west, north to south, he put something on everybody's head. There's no God but Allah. He put that on everybody's head. He said, don't be tricked by this. You don't fall for it now. It's very attractive. Because the glitter of it is very attractive. Your desires are going to be so attracted to it. The beautiful women and the beautiful garments and gold, the beautiful men and all the beautiful sights and the, and the atmosphere and the, and the, and, and the uh, uh, vegetation was something greater than this. This is a testing ground to see who is really best in conduct, who really know themselves. If you come here loving this and getting hung up in this, it means you think you're an earthling. It means you think that your wealth will keep you here. It means you've been tricked. You've been really bamboozled. Go stand in front of a funeral home. Any of them. They all got good business. Go out to the graveyards. They're always full. You don't see no three or four graves. You see like, God. Look for somebody, then you got to go look with some books in alphabetical order. You got to look, oh, no, this ain't the one, oh, no, this, this ain't where they at. What is wrong with our thinking? We've lost it. You should be connected to everything everywhere. Don't you know that the oxygen is connected to everybody? And everybody, the human beings, are connected to the oxygen? Do you know that? Is anybody prejudiced against oxygen? Anybody claiming that my superiority because the oxygen I'm breathing? Is the oxygen saying, no, I'm not going to support this human being? This is the way human beings are supposed to be with their knowledge, with their understanding. You're connected to everybody. Everybody's connected to you. That's why you have to respect everyone. You have to look with the eyes of your Lord at everyone. That's a safety. That's a wisdom. Then Allah Almighty will do this for you. He will raise you and give you the understanding and the wisdom of the heavens and the earth while you're on the earth. Your thinking will be different. Because when Moses went to Pharaoh and the Bani Israel people who had been begging Allah Almighty for freedom for centuries, when they finally got the, the freedom... And Allah Almighty was giving them what they in need of, sending them quail and manna and feeding them. Moses went up to get some more revelation. Before he got down, they were worshiping the calf. They had shown disobedience and ingratitude to the oneness of Allah, to the favors of Allah Almighty. They had two distinct, different mentalities. Moses, alayhi salam, understood who he was and whose he was. Those Bani Israel people, even though they was begging Allah Almighty for support, they didn't have a clue about themselves. 
Those are the two mentalities that are existing on the earth today. More of that mentality are like the Bani Israel people. There's only a few people that actually think like those prophets think because of the relationship that they have with Allah Almighty. They know that nothing deserves to be worshipped but Allah. That's their focus. Allah Almighty communicates to us through creation, uh, through any means. Even through the oxygen that we're breathing. Through everything, through our sight, through our hearing, through our touch. The mentality cannot comprehend Allah Almighty. But Allah Almighty is letting human beings know that why do you think you're so different from each other? So what's this thing about everybody got to be everybody else's leader? The worst, where are the followers? Everybody want to lead. But most people are blind. The blind want to lead. The leaders are hidden. Because if most people are blind, and how can they be led anyway? Especially for now. So those leaders now, they cannot be scholars to read some verses to us and explain some verses according to the translation of verses. They got to have a whole gangster power with them. They got to be able to take the blindness off us, first of all. They got to be able to heal us. They got to be able to do something for us that we could not do for ourselves. There are no egos in paradise with Allah Almighty. When beloved Muhammad Sallallahu made his Isra Miraj, when Allah Almighty said, who are you? He said, you. So after the prophets, that's why Allah Almighty sent his inheritance. Their egos are below everybody else's ego because they're carrying everybody. And we can't get those stations except with them. And that's why Allah says, obey Allah, obey the prophet, obey those I'm putting in authority over you. Because he's saying, without ego, you ain't going to get in. You can come on in somebody else's pass. Oh, you know so-and-so? Oh, they cool. Yeah, y'all come on in. By ourselves? Uh-uh, we don't even know you. Allah Almighty's friends, they got a pass. And we ain't friends with Allah, we better be friends with Allah's friends. When the Lord Almighty looks in their hearts, if he sees us in there, we can come on in. Even though our egos are like that, we couldn't get in on our own. But through them, Allah Almighty says, okay, you straight. Because you're going to hear and obey them. Then you straight. You ain't going to make no noise up in here. You ain't going to try to tear up the place. I ain't going to have to throw you in hell. We're just having a conversation. That's all we have. I'm not a scholar up here. I'm not lecturing to you. I'm talking to you. We talking. That's how the nation is going to be strong in a cemented structure when we have understanding of who we are and whose we are. And we respect those whom Allah Almighty sent to guide us. We understand why Allah Almighty, that's an honor. It's two honors. When Allah Almighty sends guidance to us, and then we recognize the guidance that Allah sends to us. You're a two-time champion. You're going to get the good of this life and the good of the next life in this life. You in life flint forever. You in. All you do now is praise your Lord and show gratitude. That's it, that's all. What you want? What you want? That's why the prophet said if you got to go to China to find one of them. You got to crawl across ice. You find one of them, they connect you to all of them. You can't get in with your ego, but their ego is enough. You follow them and obey them, that gets you in. A lot love them and they love a lot. You with them, you cool. Otherwise, That's it, that's all. You'll be seen in the fall if you're seen at all. In the fall. You'll be seen in the fall, falling to the hellfire. And this is real. 
and the misery comes in this life. You ain't got to die to go to, go to hell or heaven. It starts now. You're miserable now. You need to find somebody that can take that off of you. There's always guidance. Ask your Lord. You don't think Allah knows where his friends are? You might say, well, wow, you know, I really got this inspiration. Somebody sent me a, 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 an email that says, look, you know, I got a job for you or something. I want you to come over and, and teach English. You say, what? How did that happen? Maybe some guidance there for you. Maybe your guide. Allah does as he likes. He, is, he can do what he likes. What? Why would you want to base someone that has that kind of power? Why would you want to be disobedient to someone like that? How wise is that? You got to be a fool. You got to be nuts. You got to be insane. What's wrong with us? When Allah calls us, we don't come. Shaitan calls us, we right there front and center. He marches right in the hell. Yeah, march hey, Yeah, you all bad. You bad. Marches right into the flames. Then we fall in the flames. He said, oh, you cheated. Well, you listen, I had no power over you. You were tricked. You wanted to be a leader without being able to follow. You were your own Lord. All the big leaders with the big egos that can't follow in hell. All the humble people with their Lord on earth and in heaven before they leave here or after they leave here. The power is in humility. It's a wisdom, it's a power in those people. They know. They know where a lot is. They know how to get us there. We follow them, they get us there. Wow. Our whole life, even being around them, our whole lives change. We see the body could come on the door, start opening up and say, wow, gee, this opened up. I didn't know was I. And they harden up, but then their ego said, well, no. Then it continues to happen. Then their ego said, no. It's hard for them to accept that Allah Almighty may send someone to guide us. Allah does as he likes. How's it going to be guided? You think it's going to fall out of the sky? Allah always sends human beings to human beings. Angels to angels. If we remember this, we'll be safe. If not, then what can we say? Guidance, we can accept guidance or reject guidance. A lot of senses guidance, we know it through our hearts. We reject it. The misery comes. No one's to blame but ourselves. You want to be happy? Find guidance. Here and hereafter, find a guy. Ask Allah Almighty, oh Allah, send me guidance. Guidance always comes in the person of someone. So we're asking Allah to forgive us here and hereafter, woman, I'm talking figure about this. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alham. Alhamdulillah, bil alameen, Allah Almighty has been preparing us uh, as a people for years and years and years. And now uh, we are ready uh, to know really who we are and whose we are. Our souls, our hearts are open because we are begging Allah Almighty. Our mentality cannot see a way out. We see misery everywhere. Our politicians are vying for power and they can do nothing. They're just vying for leadership. What can they do for us? Nothing. Allah Almighty never sent the fishers. He always sends some humble person from somewhere that we relate to to raise us up. It always happens like that. Our ego at first is hard to accept. Someone looking like us, being like us, our ego is hard to accept. So we, we, we test them. We test them. And we lose against them. Over and over and over again. We can never defeat them. Allah is with them. They're with their Lord. But if that's how we got to learn, then that's how we have to learn. That's how shaitan has trained us. He has trained us to reject guidance, to fight guidance, to attack guidance. And that's what was, what's happening. But in the final analysis, Allah's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Woman Allah, if you can find it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim.
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين